Welcome to episode four of the Watson Sound podcast. I'm your host, Alex Ward, music producer and owner of Watson Sound Music Production Studio in St. Louis, Missouri. In this podcast, I go in-depth with artists from far and wide to learn about their stories. Today, I'm joined by Christian Orlett, Brendan Wickline, Emma Hartman, and Josh Brumfield of Missouri-based alt-country group Two-Headed Cow. The group began in 2015, went through a few lineup changes, and recently released their debut album, Under the Porchlight. We'll be talking about how they began the band while at school at Truman State University, their new album and the process behind its featured song, Automatic Transmission, the best advice they've ever been given, and much more. Please enjoy this episode with Christian, Brendan, Emma, and Josh from Two-Headed Cow. Automatic Transmission Find my way home for me tonight Drunk off of whiskey and wine On the streets of a college town I think it's time for me to put it in drive First of all, can you tell us about your background as a band and individually? Uh, we started almost two years ago, I guess now. Uh, there's a place up, we were from Kirksville, Missouri, and Brendan and I have been playing for, what, four years? Just on and off, mm-hmm. you know? We lived in the dorms together yeah. at Truman. So that's where we met, and we both played guitar. I was uh, just kind of starting out then. He would, he and I would just play together sometimes. And we got together two years ago before an open mic night, and we just played a couple songs with our friend uh, Joe, he used to play mandolin with us, but he's not with us now. <laughs> Sound he, like didn't he, he didn't die. <laughs> he didn't die. Well, we thought he died he, like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> he's he's fine, um, but yeah, and we've just been playing for the last two years, just around Kirksville area. We've added, you know, a couple people along the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, like I joined the band. Yeah, yeah I joined in January. And, and then we added Josh. Yeah, I was originally supposed to play uh, banjo, and I think <laughs> uh, you were gonna move over to bass, right? You thought about it yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. And, then, and then we decided, no, we don't need a banjo. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, that's where we... Uh, I think I, just, I joined a little after Emma, maybe a few months after Emma. You joined that next year. Oh, not, really? Not next was, year, but that next in the fall. She joined that winter, and then you yeah. joined that fall. Okay, okay. That so like August, a semester like later. Semester, yeah. 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 yeah, we've um, been through some weird lineup changes just with like friends graduating. Um, like our first drummer graduated and moved to Michigan. So then we got a new drummer. Uh, he is not able to be here today, but... Um, Shout out to Culver. <laughs> Shout out to Culver Hackle. Our original <laughs> bass player uh, graduated as well, moved back to St. Louis. So that's when we got Josh. And he's playing around here, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, I was in a... I was a, This is how small Kirksville is. I was in a band with the original bass player. He and I were in the Dead Beats. Oh, yeah. And then, mm-hmm. yeah. What kind of music was the Dead Beats? It was more, uh, I guess, the closest approximation is, like, punk, but that doesn't really cover it. We, um... A lot of, like, I guess our biggest influence was, like, pavement. Yeah, I caught you guys once, and it was a lot of you guys jumping around. And we were very rowdy. Yeah, it and was a good show. And can get rowdy as show. well. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you fit in perfectly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Besides lineup changes, what kind of struggles have you had within the band? Uh, I mean, finding a sound, really. Uh, I actually, I was packing up, I just moved. I found our first set list, and I don't think we play a single song from that, from, you know, from when we first started playing music we, together. We started off as strictly acoustic. Yeah, 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 that's true, too. For about the first six months yeah. of the band, and then when we added our first drummer. Well, it was still an acoustic, because he was playing <laughs> oh, the cajon. Oh, box cajon. Yeah. But so then he when he finally moved over to set, that's kind of like when we added a bass player, and I started like playing more electric guitar, and um, that yeah. kind of changed our sound a lot. And then just trying to mesh well together with that sound. Because when we started, it was Brendan and I playing the acoustic guitar, and then Joe Anger playing a mandolin. So we didn't have anything else other than that. We, it was us three guys just sitting on stools next to each other playing. It was a little uh, a little cringy to go back and watch that. <laughs> but, yeah, that's how we started. It was very different I from also, what we're doing yeah. now. I also think that... Um, one of the biggest things that, at least as a musician and especially in 2 that I've had to learn is just not to get discouraged after a, a bad gig. 
Um, yeah. Because it's very easy to be very self-critical. I think that's big, one of our biggest hurdles is just getting over that um, that critical voice in your head and just realizing, you know, there are some good shows, there are some bad shows. That's what a band is, really. Yeah, for sure, for sure. We've also a- had some... Uh, Christian and I got into, like... A I was wondering if that was... Oh, oh, I didn't yeah. know if that was too yeah, personal. Was it was at my that. house, too. I got into, like, a week-long <laughs> fight once um, after an uh, acoustic <laughs> house show. I may have... Uh, had a little much to drink and stormed off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of a big obstacle. We ended up apologizing um, at, like a at week the next later show. We had a next show, our next show. show next week. Yeah. And wasn't there a practice you guys didn't right, even talk? Yeah. So Jake, he was our bass player. Um, his first practice with us was during that feud, and we didn't talk at all during that entire <laughs> practice. And it was his first time sitting in with us as a band. It was very awkward. We would oh, still do really backup so vocals too, so we were singing with each other still, so, but we would not talk. It was very uh, Uncle Tupelo. Yeah, you guys. we've never and we've never fought other than that too. Like we, we've never, there's never been any bad blood. We it was just, strange. Yeah, we made up after that <laughs> show, and that ended up being like. Probably our best show at the time. Yeah, yeah it, was it, had, it was a good show. Yeah. It was fun. Maybe that's the key. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I recommend all bands to get in some sort of feud at least once, maybe twice if it doesn't get better. <laughs> doesn't, stick. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't stick. Doesn't stick. Yeah. So, what is your greatest accomplishment as a band? We won that battle of the bands that one time. We won a battle of bands. <laughs> um, got second in the last one we just did too, yeah. which is a pretty good show. Uh, that was actually one of my favorite shows. That was favorite the nights wrong I've had. Yeah. It ruined your voice though. Yeah, I, I couldn't. <laughs> I, I, my voice is gone for a month. That was after at Wrong that. Daddy's uh, bar in Kirksville. Yeah. Like, shout out Wrong Daddies. Shout out to Wrong. <laughs> I got shout kicked out, out of Wrong Daddies recently. We've all gotten kicked out of Wrong Daddies. Uh, <laughs> I think least, whenever we recorded at the time our first EP, uh, Shower Beer, I thought that was a pretty big accomplishment. Looking yeah. back, it's you know it's not that great, but at the time. I, I was pretty proud of it. And it was us getting together and learning how to do it, because none of us had any idea how to mm-hmm. record. Yeah. Like, we just watched, you know, a ton of YouTube videos, learned how to operate the, you know, recording gear we had. Recorded and... in a blanket for it for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we went over to Brennan's house. Before that, we went to our uh, Mason Slater. He was our older, he was our first drummer. Went over to his house to record at the beginning, and then we finished at Brennan's. And we kind of just... We layered yeah. everything <laughs> on one track at a time, so we only had one mic. So I think we did we did drums, drums first, and then we yeah. did bass, and we did acoustic guitar, electric guitar, vocals. We had to use a metronome for everything, otherwise it you know sounded too jumbled up. <coughs> but it was definitely a it was a learning experience, mm-hmm. and it was uh, you know it, 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 there were times during that where it was fun, but then there were other times where it was just like a little frustrating trying to get it to sound you know decent. Yeah, and it was a good time, I guess. Yeah, um, but after we released that, we were just ecstatic, I remember. I remember walking with Brendan just around town, just talking about it for like an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a great feeling. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. I remember Mason came to my house with uh, at some house show with a bunch of CDs. He just looked so triumphant. Yeah, <laughs> we bought a bunch of uh, C- blank CDs from Walmart, uh, went over to the library and printed out the cover art. And, the Which title. is phenomenal. The cover <laughs> art, the cover if, if you cover get the chance, something. look at it. It was made on, like, Microsoft Paint. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is your process of writing a song? Is there kind of a, a leader here that writes the lyrics? How does that work? Well, Brent and I both write music. Uh, so I write, I think I'm, I've got more of the songs. I'm going to mm-hmm. be, more of the songs that are going to be on this upcoming album we'll be doing, um, I wrote. And I normally will sit down, now I have a couple beers and just start strumming until writing. Uh, writing it, it always changes, honestly. There's no <laughs> set in stone way I write. But like often, I'll just sit out. I was often sitting on my porch and writing down lyrics, and then I'll have the chords do it. And then I'll come to Brendan and I'll say, "Make this sound good," because <laughs> <laughs> he's a lot more. He's a lot better of a guitarist than I. He's much te- more, he's a lot technically better. So then he takes it and he just goes to town. Sometimes, yeah, like I'll change the chords around a little bit maybe or and then after that I'll try to make up like a lead part or pick out like what's a really cool part of the yeah. song that we can highlight to make that mm-hmm. song stand yeah. out from our other songs and then once we get kind of like oh also put some backup vocals in maybe yeah. and then once we get that <laughs> down then we usually kind of bring it to the rest of the band 
And then they just go crazy. And they just kind of <laughs> make yeah. their parts and yeah. with the rhythm section, I just kind of because I before joining the band, I didn't play a whole lot of bass. I played a lot of guitar, <laughs> but I just figured it would transfer, and I was kind of right because you know the top four strings of the guitar are tuned the same as the strings on a bass. But um, I kind of had to have our, our our drummer Culver coach me through a lot of just the fundamentals of bass. So we yeah, and he he's not able to be here today, but he has helped us a lot too, and kind oh, of like yeah. help like setting kind of a vibe a, yeah. of the songs. Mm -hmm. He'll be yeah. like, oh, have you considered doing this? And then he'll like demonstrate it. And yeah. be like, oh, okay. And then it'll like totally give the song a different feel. Uh -huh. It was awesome because we'd been a band for about a year before he joined and he, his first practice, he was not hesitant to be like, well, yeah, well, what if you do this? And it really mm -hmm. gave us a tighter sound. So uh -huh. I'm glad it gives he, us a new dimension. Oh, that's great. He sure, stepped yeah. up for sure. And I'm glad he just did that. So yeah, yeah he really helped us out this last year for sure. Now, who would you say is your biggest influence? There's a few. I mean, I think we all agree, probably. I mean, they're my favorite band, and I really pushed for this sound, I guess. That's definitely worn off on us. Oh, big like, time. To the point of, like, sometimes me frontmanning, I feel like I'm ripping the guy off. Uh, it's the band. It's called They're the Old 97s. They've been around since 95? Seven? No. no. <laughs> it's the early 90s. Uh, you know, alternative country kind of was... Not big. It never got big. People were thinking it might get big. It's kind of a fringe culture. Yeah, it's fringe yeah. culture. And they, they, they were out at Dallas, Texas, I believe. And uh, I've always just loved their music. And it's a very, very aggressive kind of train beat, like uh, Americana sound to it. But it's also got some, like, got pop to it. Like, Bell and Sebastian poppy, type. Yeah. Like, almost Elliott Smith sometimes. Yeah, A little yeah, bit of sure. even punk thrown in there as yeah. well, I feel like sometimes. They synthesize with the, with the a lot energy. of genres as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're they're uh, definitely my biggest influence. Um, I think also personally. like Ryan Adams, yeah. uh, Wilco, um, or two. Those are, yeah, I never really um, listened to a lot of like the alt country genre until I met Christian. He introduced me to a lot of it. First, you weren't too thrilled by it and either. I, yeah, I remember I that. Honestly, I didn't, really, <laughs> I didn't like the old 97s or like Uncle Tupelo. Uncle Tupelo at first, but now it's that's probably about half of what I listen to. And yeah, I think our dad's taste in music really influenced <laughs> especially us. Especially Josh and mine. Yeah. Our dads. It seems like we we actually just saw a Sunvolt show back in March, and both of our fathers went with us because they're also <laughs> fans of the bands. The other thing is the name Two Eyed Cow. Uh, it's it's a the influence is a little less there. It's more a little more subtle, but you know REM is other than Old 97s, is REM's my favorite band. It's always been my favorite band since I was a kid, and that that uh, line "To It a Cow" it comes from one of their songs. Oh, really? So yeah, that's oh, where wow. that's where the that's where our band name came from. There are also some like kind of there's some bands you wouldn't expect when you hear our music. Like you guys, we all kind of like the Smiths. Yeah, the Smiths. which you wouldn't. I mean, I guess it bleeds into <laughs> our music and sometimes, yeah. and like Pink Floyd and stuff. Like a lot of. What else do we like that you wouldn't expect? <laughs> I like Weezer a lot. I grew yeah. Up with she would, good. yeah. <laughs> I think like I grew up a lot with more uh, like classic rock, mm -hmm. and then like British pop, like the Beatles and that kind of thing. So I feel like I have a lot of that. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Influence as well. And you get some bluesy guitar riffs. You you add that into our songs sometimes too, which gives it a different feel. But yeah, so yeah, I, that's more than one, I guess. <laughs> but. No, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think motivates you as a band to keep working? I just, I guess, love of music, really. I, I think we all just really, we, you know, we all like similar music, but we all love different music, too. And I've learned other bands and songs through other people and just, like, really trying to keep getting better, I guess. Yeah, it's just okay. that... Oh, you can go ahead, Josh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Brennan and I don't have the best relationship <laughs> in the band, but it's okay. Um, I think it's just that drive to create that everyone has. I mean, we, there's no real right. external mm -hmm. goals, at least none that are, like, crucial i mean we'd like to get shows we'd like to sell cds but i think in order to be a successful musician most of your goals have to be set kind of internally rather than externally you shouldn't have too many material like landmarks because i don't know i think that kind of hinders you i think for me to just like having that thing to look forward to yeah whether or not you're you know in college and looking forward to practicing after like a long day of class or you know looking forward to practicing on the weekend you know, when you're off work or... Usually, like, whenever I hear about any sort of practice, I think of an obligation. But mm -hmm. with Two at a Cow, I've, you know, practice, I, it's something I actively look forward yeah. to. It's usually the best part of my day. I mean, a, a good 
portion of it is goofing off, but then a good portion of it is, <laughs> yeah. is like, I mean, we do joke around a lot in practice. Sometimes more than we practice, yeah. usually not. But, but when push comes to shove, like, <laughs> I, I enjoy the goofing off as much as the serious, yeah. like, you know, figuring stuff out and mapping out a song. We're all really good friends, and I think that's, like, uh, and the other thing is this band introduced, like, Brett and I have known each other for, what, five years now? Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't know Emma. We met Emma because one of our friends like uh, said, are you still looking for someone to play strings in your band? And I said, yes. And we got Emma in the band. And she's not just our viola player. She's just a good friend of ours. Mm-hmm. And then we met Josh through the Aquadome, and he, he became a good friend of ours. And we had him join. And I mean, we're, honestly, like I've made some of my best friends through Two Etic Out. Yeah, if we weren't yeah. friends, it wouldn't be nearly as fun as it is, no. I think. Yeah. It would be more of a chore, but it's so much fun when you're friends with everyone. Yeah. Our old bass player, too, Jake, I didn't really know him that well yeah. until he started playing mm-hmm. bass for us, and then I'm actually in another band with him we- called the Buscemi's. It's kind of like his band. <laughs> is that like Steve Buscemi? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we've become really good friends uh, through that as well. So Yeah, for sure. And Culver, too, we didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got way comfortable with Culver real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Every practice, he would just bring up, like, a new, uh, I don't know, some kind of cultural or social relevant yeah. issue and be like, Josh, what do you think about this? <laughs> and I'd be like, Culver, I don't know. I don't speak for my whole generation because he's a bit older, not super mm-hmm. old. I think he's, like, 27 or 28. But he'd always ask me, like, Josh, what do you think of Black Lives Matter? Josh, what do you think of uh, safe spaces? I'm like, I don't know, man. And he'd be like, you're the president of the Aquadome. You should know this stuff. <laughs> so that's how we kind of bonded. Yeah. Would you say that just practicing together, playing together is what most excites you in the band, or is there something else? Playing live. Playing live, yeah. <laughs> it's a treat. It's fun. It's, yeah. uh, that's where, I think that's where we shine. Um, recording's fun, but f- it's got nothing on just being up on stage and just playing fast and loud and goofing off on stage sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think some of the my fondest memories in college have been at like the Aquadome or Wrong Daddies. Yeah. Or, um, you know, some similar place just playing because there's, I don't know, there's something to be said about it. There's a real high that playing live gives you that nothing else really can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. So you guys have a new album out called Under the Porch Light. What's the meaning behind the name? Um, it's called that because I would, uh, we hung out under the porch light a lot. It was, it was kind of a, we did a photo shoot for it actually. Our friend Garland <laughs> did it and he's, he's very into photography and he did it for free. He's just, he was excited to do it. He was ecstatic. Um, and uh, we just hung out. What do we do? We just kind of hung out on the we porch while he just hung out. <laughs> pictures yeah. of us. It's like yeah. where we hang out anyway. Yeah, we were, yeah. We were just doing what we always do. And he, he, he's, pictures of it. Yeah, he's got some really cool pictures. And in fact, he actually came back because I was like, well, we need a picture for the back cover. And we thought of, you know, the same picture, but with all of us gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and I saw it. It was so sad because like, we're leaving. We're leaving this place where it was a hub where we'd hang out. You know, we got... We have friends that are, you know, I live in Columbia now. We have friends in Kansas City, St. Louis. I mean, Emma, you're still in Kirksville. Michigan. Yeah. California, <laughs> Michigan, Florida, if you move. Yeah. So it's kind of like we wanted to, you know, get something made to kind of remember those times mm-hmm. by. Mm-hmm. It's a very, it, it feels very nostalgic already. And, yeah. So that's kind of the theme of the album, would you say? Yeah, and it's, it's yeah, and it's a lot of stuff that, yeah, I, I would agree, yeah. I now I'm thinking of the songs. I just yeah. have, like, you know, maybe our friends can listen to it or, you know, people we don't know and just really dig it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe just be reminded of if you've ever been to Kirksville or... It's a good snapshot of our life. Yeah, you know, like, how your sense of smell is so linked to memory? I think music is a very close second, if not Mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. And I think whenever I'd like to, whenever I listen to our record, um, to, like, kind of be taken back the way that, you know, if you smell your mom's old perfume, you go back to when you were six or whatever. I want to be able to listen to this album and go back to, like, the porch and, you know, yeah. do yeah. gum and my house and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a kind of an Americana vibe, which I'm always all about. So. <laughs> <laughs> On the album is a song called Automatic Transmission, arguably the most popular among your fans. What was the process of writing it? I started to write the song probably in... Fall of 2015. That's when we started, yeah. That was like yeah, right, yeah. right shortly after we first started as a band. I started off, because automatic transmission is, <clears> a line, <throat> is the first line of each verse. Um, I had the whole song written, and then I showed it to Christian, and he was like, eh, I'm not really digging these choruses. Oh, <laughs> I didn't just bat. You but were pretty down cor- on the, the chorus, chorus yourself. Was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty awful. And then, 
we tried substituting this chorus that he had written in it. For a different song. I can't remember what that song was called, but and it, it wasn't very good. It ended up <laughs> clicking. So that was actually the first song that we wrote, like co-wrote. Yeah, and we just kind of, we wrote a third verse too together for mm -hmm. that, so. And then I think it's still the only song that we both sing lead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what um, mm -hmm. makes it so great and why so many people like it, including myself. Um, it just showcases both your guys' strengths as songwriters. Yeah. Like, whereas most songs, it's like, oh, this is a Christian song. It's very much a Christian song. Or Those, this is very much a Brennan song. Or it has a lot of Brennan's, you know, lead guitar or something. But Automatic Transmission is just like the synthesis of both in my opinion, both of their biggest strengths as uh, musicians. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a song that, like, I remember we were playing a house show last year, and, like, we'd been playing that song for a while, but I was singing the chorus, he sings the verse, and I remember looking out in the crowd, and people were singing along with it. I'd never seen that happen to it. That's know, one of our original was... songs. It was mm. so sweet. Wow. I think that was probably right after we put our EP out, which that, which yeah. that was the first song on, mm -hmm. and the people were able to like listen to it, mm -hmm. you know, other than our shows. Where was that show? That was at a house, was it? That was my was house, house, I think. Yeah, if it was the release party, it was my house. Yeah, yeah that's right. It was right, a house yeah. show in Kirksville, Missouri, yeah. yeah. When we have shows, that's like one of the main songs that people actually will sing mm -hmm. along with us, which is cool. Yeah, it's still one of my favorites to sing yeah. every well. time. Until I forget the two shows ago, I forgot the chords <laughs> somehow, and I had to go up to running it on stage, and you're like, what am I doing again? Like, <laughs> how do I play? We've been playing this for a year and a half, but I have no idea. And you forgot that line. And I forgot the line. It was, uh, but, you know, that's also kind of what's fun about live shows, yeah. the mess-ups. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. I find it funny. So with your current lineup, what was your first gig or performance like? Current lineup? I think it was at the Opera. That was definitely... Cause no, because that was the, that was a, we had two shows that day. Um, oh, we did the was, one on campus yeah. at the Student Union Building, and then we played at the Aquadome later that night. Interesting. I yeah. think I remember. Oh, wait, was yeah. that with Jake though? Or no, 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 no. That was because I remember everyone. I played your dad's bass. I think because the, the funny thing about me is I don't own a bass. <laughs> <laughs> I have which a bass. He, he neglected to tell us when we asked him to play yeah, bass. Yeah, well, no, you asked me to play banjo, which I did have. That's true. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is actually remember when we said that Brendan and Christian's fight was our biggest. Uh, <laughs> this is our biggest this obstacle. <laughs> no, but not uh, owning a bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just remember it was at the Aquadome. I think I played Love Song, and I was so proud of it, which is a Cure cover, but yeah. it's very bass-heavy. Mm. That was funny because I remember you playing that, and you were so excited to play that because you had a bass solo. You started <laughs> that song, and you just took off. I was you so played fast. really fast. <laughs> 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 Emma has to come in second. She's just... <laughs> is that the, that's the day we played uh, for SAB Final Blowout and then later played at the Aquadome, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah that was... Uh, I actually, that was the, my first day that I started my new job where I was working overnights. So we had two shows that day, and then after the second one, which ended around 11, I went into work at midnight, worked till 8 a.m. Oh, God. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a long day. But. I don't know. I, not, I mean, I don't know how that felt for you, but coming off the high of a good show, I feel like I could stay up for yeah, a yeah, week. Well, I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not going to, like, waste you know, I'm not going to turn down these gigs because uh -huh. i got to sleep for my job. Like, this is my last day to, like, be free. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the best performance you've had? No, it's not. It's Wrong the Daddy, Daddy Show. show. <laughs> well, I, I, okay, yeah. I'm just thinking of some other good ones. Well, we've had, Which yeah. The one at Manhattan events. Oh, that was a good yeah, one. Was good. But I think Wrong Daddy's takes the cake. That yeah. was probably two months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for our listeners that don't know, what is Wrong Daddy's? Wrong exactly? Daddy's is a bar, kind of club. In a very rural town, so, uh, you know, it, it gets as packed as it can be. It's a bit different from a club you're going to see in St. Louis or somewhere. Um, but, yeah, we, it, we, we played a Battle of the Bands uh, 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 for, not for cancer, but for against cancer. For against cancer, yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, we're the first to go on, aren't we? Yeah, we got second place, and um, and we were kind of at a disadvantage going first too, because not <laughs> yeah, everyone not really shows up comes at first. first. Yeah, we played early, but it was a, uh, one heck of a show. We, uh, I was, I had a few beers with me, so I was a little looser too, and just. <laughs> You had right. Alex Who's bringing you beers up on stage. Yeah, I had a guy bringing me beer on stage. It was great, and we just we were we had a really 
fast, aggressive sound that night. We had a different drummer. We too. had a different drummer. And that that night was too. the biggest part because, like, all he, right, well, let's not bash. No, I'm not. I'm call, no, I'm saying <laughs> what I'm saying about that. You, you took me the wrong way. No, I know. Uh, I, I I hate this band. Uh, no, uh, the thing was, we had one practice with this guy. Yeah, yeah. that's why it was such a big and deal. We were that it was very so good. worried because he yeah. only practiced each song once. We had practiced once, so it was like, and it, only once with Brendan. Yeah. Because Brendan oh, yeah. had been gone, and we did a couple songs that, mm-hmm. as a full band, only once. We Brendan. had a lot going against us, yeah. and it somehow ended up being our best show. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was phenomenal. Uh, it had a good, fast pace. Uh, the sound was run great. Uh, Josh jumped up in the air, and his hat <laughs> Lost fell my off, hat. and people <laughs> bounced cheered. around on him for a little bit. I mean, it was it was great. We got a couple videos, actually, up from that show on our Facebook page. Mm-hmm. and. I'd be lying if I said I haven't watched them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I live vicariously through that moment again. But yeah, it was it was a fun night, and the other bands were great there too. Yeah, mm-hmm. we met some. Um, there's another band called the uh, Royal Furs Royal from Thurs. Columbia, mm-hmm. Missouri. We, we got to meet them. They were super nice and well, Con, Con Man Economy. They're uh, one of our good friends of from course, yeah. Kurt yeah, Stone. They yeah. played and they put on great mm-hmm. shows. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. kind of punk, right? Uh, Pop punk, yeah, Pop punk. yeah, so. you know, yeah. And then American Basswood, American Basswood, another one of our good friends. They're from Kirksville, uh, too. They always put on a show yeah, I never want to miss. They're very, yeah. <laughs> they actually <laughs> just talented. released an album, too. So, yeah. you know, if you want to check them, them yeah. uh, they're It's on Spotify it. and iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that, that kind of whole scene is another reason why we got started. There's just a lot of people that were encouraging yeah. us. That's one of the biggest things that is encouraging to me because in Kirksville, there's, I mean, first of all, it's a pretty rural town, so you wouldn't expect it to be, like, you know, an oasis for art and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But um, even, like, bands that are very different. Like, I would say us and Con Man are pretty fundamentally different bands in how oh, we approach yeah. music, our style, but we both support each other in such a way, even if, you know, each other's music isn't our thing. Or I like Con Man, I think we all do, yeah. but, like, it yeah. isn't what we normally listen to. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound like us, but... Everybody, regardless of genre, regardless of sound, really supports each other because I think they have to in a town like Kirksville, which I think is really special. Yeah. yeah. What was the most disappointing performance you've had? Well, I think Emma, would oh, you like God. to talk about that show? You were it was the you, show me, where and you guys Brandon. Were no, no, no. You mean well? That was oh, no, the oh, church. oh, the church show. Yeah. <laughs> is that was the just the three yeah, of that us? Was, that was an we, interesting. Show. We played a me, uh, Christian, and Emma played a three-person acoustic show. At a, the Newman Center, which is a church on Truman's campus. Yeah. And so we also changed our s- normal set list around, too, because, you know, I didn't want to play a lot of songs about getting drunk at a church. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> or songs with, you know, cuss words in yeah. them. Yeah. So really different set, and we practiced a few times, and... Th- but nothing against the Newman Center. Great people. It's a different everything. energy. It's a very different <laughs> energy. It's very quiet. We don't there. vibe well. Yeah, and we'd finish a song, and you know, we'd just get it like really quiet applause, like you'd be at like a normal con, like a classical like a recital. Yeah, <laughs> recital. Like a coffee almost. shop. Or yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. that's not our uh, style. And it was just like. And I was. I think I had just came off like. A double or something. I just. I came work. straight home. Awful. Yeah, I came yeah. straight from work. It was just I changed. A bad show. <laughs> But you know, it, it gave us a story, and then yeah. other than that, the show where Brendan and I fought afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And there was a, a recent show that, like, it was that uh, on the the mall at Truman. Where we didn't in, have a mic. Yeah, it was just gym. kind of a mess. Yeah. Oh, oh, that wasn't too bad. It was, yeah, I think. We, no, we okay, I, I couldn't. I, no, we, I was too worried about just not having a mic or a guitar. Set that. those worries aside. There was one of our okay. first shows. Like, was in a barn on Truman's <laughs> oh. campus at the University Farm, and in a barn. Well, well, it wasn't it, supposed to It was going to be outside, but then it started raining, so we had to hurriedly move the PA system we had rented from the library <laughs> um, <laughs> inside to this metal shed. And then we didn't have a lot of time to set up, so we just had two vocal mics yeah. and for me and Christian and then didn't plug in any of the other instruments, so they were just purely acoustic, and it was just awful. You'd think yeah. a barn would be two-headed cow's turf. But yeah, it, was. <laughs> it wasn't. It, it was, was very awkward. <laughs> yeah, and it started off so promising, too, because we got outside, and we were on the stage. They had a fog machine. I was like, this is awesome. We've never had a fog machine. <laughs> 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 we got rained out. Where do you hope to be in five years from now? So that's an interesting question. Mm. I would really like to continue doing this, mm-hmm. except mm-hmm. it depends where I'm going to be. I, or a, a couple, where a few. Where of all of us we are going to be in LA in five years. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I might. There's a chance I'll be moving to Florida soon, unless I find you know another job around here, which I'm hoping to still. But I live in Columbia, Missouri now. 
too, which is not far, but still mm -hmm. two hours away. If, you know, if we want to practice or. But I think you know. we. I think if all the cards, you know, if, if everything falls in the right place, uh, I mean, I don't know. I can't speak for everyone, but I think we all want to keep doing this because well, it's just a good yeah. time and it's just mm -hmm. fun. And as long as it's, I think we're going to continue until we have to stop. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like when we're 50, we can get like a yeah. two in the revival reunion. Yeah. 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 I, I just really think the goal in five years is if we keep doing this, uh, just still having fun. Yeah. I mean, I would yeah. hate the second this becomes a chore is when I want to quit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's true. Um, and I don't think we're even close to that. Oh, yeah, so I don't, th I don't know. foresee yeah. that ever happening. But if it were to, that would be the only reason I see us quitting. Yeah, I, I completely agree there. But yeah, so it's just a lot, of, a lot of unknowns right now. But yeah, I think even, even if we do all move, I think we all want to keep pursuing music in our own way. And I think we'll all keep sharing it with each other and working together, uh -huh. even yeah. if we're away from each other. So you've come a long way since the acoustic trio, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. So if you could tell yourselves that band back then, if you could tell yourselves one thing, what would it be? Uh, you know... Mm -hmm. That's that's an interesting question. Don't wear flip flops. On Don't your wear first flip show. flops <laughs> at your first show. You can see pictures. Christian looks pretty foolish. I right? do. <laughs> <laughs> I, do. Um, I didn't have a guitar. You get a guitar case. Don't just carry your guitar <laughs> into shows. Um, buy a guitar tuner. Buy a and, guitar like, tune tuner. before the show. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but other than that, you know. Um, don't be afraid to keep trying to evolve. Because I remember we were hesitant to go electric. Because we had an idea, what we had, we had a sound, and I think we were afraid that if we went electric, we weren't going to be able to continue it. And we were able to. I mean, it just takes work, and um, you know, just keep working towards something you want. Yeah, I think just in general as a musician, that I, that's something that I would tell myself a few years ago is just one, you're your own worst critic, and two, for every ten bad songs, you're going to get a really good song. You just mm -hmm. have to keep cranking them out. Right. Even if you're going to have a lot of songs that you end up pitching, sometimes you need to get those songs out of your system in order to strike gold. Exactly, yeah. We've, we, there are several songs we played <laughs> live like a few times. One of our first original songs was a, call, a song called Messed Up Times, and it's just about drunk driving. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't a bit, uh, it wasn't a good song, but anymore. we don't play it anymore. Nor do we a, advocate for intoxicated drunk driving. driving yeah, but yeah. What was that other song? There are a few, but there was one called Won't Be Loving, yeah, that, yeah. which was super country and <laughs> folksy. It, was, and it sounded like a June Carter Cash song, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we played that a couple times. There, there are a few others that we do, and you know, you know, just try a song out. If it doesn't work out, don't get discouraged. Just pitch it. Make a new song. What do you guys do in your free time besides music? Together or individually? We're together. A well, we, <laughs> yeah, when we're we were together. in college, we were together I mean, we're a lot. We're still together. Yeah, I, I came down. I just moved down. I was down for a week, and I was, uh -huh. saw you like most of the time. Or, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We like video games. We like, we like drinking. That is, <laughs> yeah, a big part. The first time uh, Christian and I ever hung out, we polished off like two... 12 packs yeah we finished one off and we walked bad. over to the gas station to buy more uh, I had a Porsche up in oh Christmas. my god yeah and the amount of times we just hang out listen to music and uh, drink <laughs> um <laughs> I mean, I don't think we're any, we're not alcoholics. No, we're but just, we're just you we know, just enjoy a good we're in a band. <laughs> <laughs> we're in a band. Um, other than I, that, I spent a lot of time like on the weird like gear side of music. So yeah. like I would research like different guitars and like nerdy stuff like that. When I first joined the band, you were really into these weird documentaries. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to call you out because they were kind of <laughs> they were kind of a troubling material, but. <laughs> If you want to talk now about you it. you got to say it. Otherwise no, I, I like watching like various documentaries on Netflix. Um, I think the one Josh was talking about, it was like a Nazi you, documentary. You're watching a lot of Nazi documentaries. <laughs> um, you know, Planet Earth, like that kind of stuff. I got, I, I, yeah, whenever I'm alone, I'll get really in. I, I, I hyper-focus on stuff. So like if I have a show, that's all I think about yeah. for like a week. And I think we're all kind of like that. We have that obsessive. I think that's kind of what you know binds us together. We're all kind of obsessive people. Sometimes to a fault. Uh, <laughs> in fact, Emma and I had a tradition oh, last yeah. year. <laughs> Apparently, I have a bad taste in movies too. But go on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's very strange. Uh, <laughs> we, we we it started us because she'd never seen the Babadook, and I was like, yeah. you got to see the Babadook. Oh, it's I've great. seen that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. It's a good movie. It's a good, uh, <laughs> So, but I'm like, it's pretty scary. So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to play a cute video game. <laughs> 
We're gonna watch the Babadook. Was it Yoshi? Well, we played we Kirby. Kirby. Okay, yeah. We beat epic yarn. Se- yeah, we beat several video games yeah. together, <laughs> and we watched way too many horror movies together. And we do it every Wednesday. We play a really like mm-hmm. lighthearted video game. Watch a messed up horror movie. And then, and then play the video game. And play the video game again. <laughs> like, it was a sandwich, uh, but, like, the, the bread was good, and the inside, the was, was the bad. meat was bad. Um, <laughs> uh, but, it's yeah. Good analogy. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so we just did that yeah. uh, almost every week for we the kind last of, year. We got to a point where we exhausted our horror movies, and we started watching some really bad yeah. ones. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you promote yourself as a band? We got some good friends. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, let's take a minute to talk about our friends. Our friend group's great. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> one of our friends named Alex who Alex Oh, he's gonna love yeah. this. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of times he'll just yell out when he sees us. Is that two headed cow? Yeah, that's become kind of a running. And that's joke. become like a joke, but then pe- I think people do hear it. Because I'm like random people. No, random people say it to us too. Yeah. And he's told me, he's shown it to other people, like from his hometown and stuff. I think like, Sarah just showed her mom shower beer. She, yeah, she, she did. Said that, she yeah. didn't like the cursing. She didn't like the cursing. Yeah. She liked the rest good. of it. Um, and I know uh, our friend Katie Birch and Xavier Vaughn, um, the two of our really good friends, uh, they. S- several of their friends from back home, I just gave I just gave them a, an old copy of our of Shower Beer because they really liked our music and mm-hmm. they started coming up from Fulton, Missouri to come see our shows. Yeah. So like our friends are just incredible. Like they they've pushed us so hard, to just keep going and just mm-hmm. help spread our music and I. They really enjoy it. it. It doesn't feel like, you know, sometimes you'll show your music to your mom or something, and she'll pretend to like yeah. it. And yeah. They, like, I really do, I think I can confidently say they enjoy it, and they listen to it in their free time. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, uh, in fact, I got in one of my friend, uh, my friend Garland's car, and he had our album playing already when I got <laughs> in. And I don't, like, you know, it, it wasn't, like, a planned thing. And, um, and the other thing that's so cool is just, like, they've, learned not just our music but our friend Alex uh, he uh, <clears throat> was he's gotten into other music and he's like I never heard this song until I heard you guys cover it and mm-hmm. he's just he's gotten into other music through it and that's cool cuz like mm-hmm. for me I love sp- I have a very kind of niche uh, taste in music and to push those songs out and get other people to really like them. Yeah, you guys awesome. introduced me to the old 97s. Yeah. I didn't know about them. The radio station too. Yeah. Uh, Truman's 88.7 the Edge station we got some of our songs on there and i think that helped get it out some too because yeah yeah you'll just be like driving in your car and then you'll hear your song on the radio that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very weird. weird yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah. what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given mm. i can go um because actually i just found this while i was packing so our old bass player uh, jake hurst a uh, good friend he had a going away party last year and, he, and he, everyone who went he wrote a letter to them <laughs> On a typewriter, an old-fashioned typewriter. So, you know, riddled with spelling mistakes, but it's a very <laughs> sweet letter, very nice letter. And the first paragraph is him going, you know, complimenting me. Second paragraph is him going, my one advice to you is try harder. You know, you've, you've written good songs. You need to just keep doing it. And just if you don't keep trying and keep just trying harder and constantly pushing yourself, you're not going to keep writing good music, you know. And... He wrote that on his going away letter. It was straight and to the point, but I really appreciated it. Um, so yeah, that was some, that was cool advice from him. And he's well, he's the guy who helped get us shows when we started playing too, before he was in our band. So he's been a big help to us. Uh, yeah, I remember it wasn't directly advice given to me. I think I was watching like an Elliot Smith interview, and he said, um, "Find what you like in music. Try to like isolate well, if it's certain chord changes or certain themes and." You know, try to replicate that, which is pretty deceptively simple. You know, like whenever I write music, I sometimes forget, like, is this music I'd want to listen to? Basically, just write music that you would want to listen to. We played a show with the band Ray Fitzgerald. That was when we were a purely acoustic yeah. band still. And their guitar player was like, man, you really need to get yourself an electric guitar because, like, you can really shred or something <laughs> like that. And I was like, yeah, maybe I should, like, because at that point, you know, I was living in a small apartment, I just hadn't brought my electric guitar back from my, uh, you know, up from my parents' home because I didn't want to deal with, like, the amp and everything. But then I, that was when I, we did bring it up, and that's kind of when we changed our sound yeah, to become sure. more electric. So it's kind of spurred in part from him. Uh, I had this high school teacher, and my senior year he wrote me a little note in my yearbook, and it was basically just put yourself out there, like, don't be afraid to show the world who you are, whatever. And I think that you know, advice did help me when it comes to two-headed cow. Like, this is not something I would have done in high school, but 
I'm really glad I did it to join the band. You know, it was a good decision to make. So Great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, another fun question. If you had a soundtrack to your life, what would it be? Jurassic Park main theme song. <laughs> All the time, all day, every day. All right. <laughs> you know the, the shepherd's tone that just keeps going down like, mm, and it does that infinitely? <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I don't oh, know. I gotta be gonna say <laughs> You guys don't have a soundtrack? Not really. Oh. Favorite song. Do I What's your favorite song? What's your favorite song? Here? I have a few favorite songs. Okay. I guess the Smiths. The Smiths just, discography would just be <laughs> Morrissey constantly <Yeah>. crooning. <laughs> Maybe if I could make like a surf rock playlist. <laughs> yeah. I, I like to listen to that a lot when I'm just like doing stuff around the house, or, like at work. You know, my headphones. I think my my, my favorite, favorite song. song is uh, "13" by Big Star. I really like like kind of coming of age type um, yeah. stories, any kind of coming of age narrative, and that really, it just somehow totally captures the uh, the feeling of like adolescent, just adolescence, and I really like that. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, yeah if you ever watched that '70s show, it was uh, <laughs> it was Eric and Donna's song "13" by Big Star. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Thanks for having yeah. us, man. It was fun. This episode was definitely a fun one. You can follow Two-Headed Cow on Facebook, which is linked to the show notes. Automatic Transmission and their album Under the Porch Light are available for streaming on Apple Music, Spotify, and Bandcamp. The links to these, as well as to a short video of the making of the album, are also linked in the show notes. If you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to tweet at me your number one takeaway at Watson underscore sound. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Watson Sound Studio. If you are a recording artist and would like to work with me for your next project, you can view my services and send me a message at watsonsoundstudio.com. You can stay up to date with the podcast by subscribing on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube. As always, thank you for listening, and be sure to tune in to next week's episode with Max Rayforder of G Failure. She's thinking about leaving again, but Lord knows I'd be better than him. I guess there ain't no reefers this time Well it was early 5 a.m. When she broke my sleep again And I swear to God I didn't drink that much She was a cold sweat on my body She was a champion in my mind